Hello, I'm Alan Franklin. I'm Professor Emeritus of Physics at the University of Colorado, and I live in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, since I, my retirement, I have continued my work on the history and philosophy of science, mostly on experiment in physics, as I have done for a long time. Recently, I have been collaborating with my friend, Ron Lehman, who is also a former fellow, and we have had three books published. The first one of them is Measuring Nothing Repeatedly, Null Experiments in Physics. We were led to this topic because in the recent replication crisis in psychology and elsewhere, we learned that uh, journals in social science were hesitant to publish null results and scholars were even hesitant to submit null results. And so we thought this was odd because null results are so important in physics, starting with Galileo's mythical experiment at the Leaning Tower of Pisa and going on to the famous Michelson-Woolley experiment. Our second book was Once Can Be Enough, Decisive Experiments, No Replication Needed. This was, again, a continuation of our work on replication. Examples of this are, for example, the experiment by Wu, Ambler, Haywood, Hoppies, and Hudson showing on the beta decay of oriented nuclei, showing that nature is not sym uh, symmetric left and right. Uh, more technically, it showed non-conservation of parity in the weak interactions. Our most recent book was Case Studies in Experimental Physics, Why Scientists Pursue Investigations. Uh, in the old days, philosophers of science talked about the context of discovery in the context of justification. Uh, thanks to the work of Larry Loudon and Tom Nichols around 1980, some of us have begin to talk about the context of pursuit, namely the further investigation of things. There's been a fair amount of recent work on pursuit in theory, and we thought we would talk about that as far as experiment goes. Our large case study is the involves the history of beta decay from the discovery of radioactivity in 1896 up through the formulation of Fermi's first successful theory of beta decay in 1933. Uh, most recently, we just completed an essay for the online Oxford Research Encyclopedia of physics on experimentation in the 20th and 21st centuries. Uh, Oxford allowed us only 10,000 words, which was difficult to say anything very useful on a topic that broad, but we snuck a footnote by them, which refers to a much longer article in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, also online by Slobodan Perovich, another former fellow and myself, which is five times as long. And so, although I've been slowing down a little on research, I am still involved. Thank you. Yeah.